Think alien. Think platform shoes, eyeliner, and gender bending. Drift back to the experimental 70s, modern 80s, and then return to present day where the future is right around the corner. No, you're not having a flashback. You've entered the Bowie Zone. Oh, thank God you people speak my language. Uh-oh, deja vu. <laughs> I'm all sitting comfortably, and we'll begin. And it'll all change around three o'clock when I go off and do my soap. The godfather of modern music turned 50 this year. And while his hair may be shorter and his furrow fashion a little bit more down to earth, David Boy still is going where no man has gone before, with his millennialist music and flamboyant theatrics. It's little wonder that after three decades, the Thin White Duke still reigns supreme. This month, Boy returned to Earth with the release of Little Wonder, the first single from his upcoming CD, Earthling. In his new material, Bowie's as experimental as ever. This time around, he mixes aggressive rock with the drum and bass jungle rhythms from the London club scene, and in the process, has once again created a whole new sound. Well, you're entering your fourth decade as a performer. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> But you're, <laughs> well, you're, you are entering your, your fourth decade as a performer, and yes. you're as leading edge as you ever were, and you're, you seem so young, and you're still so cool. <laughs> How do you do it? Cashmere, cashmere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, answer part two. How do you stay so cool? Um, probably because uh, my needs are not in the mainstream. And, I mean, I've always been drawn to things that happen on the edge of culture or, or society. And, uh, and that perpetually keeps me in a, in a state of excitement, a state of creative arousal. It's Bowie's creativity with his own image that blasted his career into outer space. In the 70s, he led the glam rock movement, and throughout his career, Bowie has continued to reinvent himself. Throughout your music, yeah. you've given us these characters in, in videos and on stage. You've um, Ziggy Stardust and Aladdin Sane and the Thin White Dude. And the other one. <laughs> what motivates you to create the characters? I think probably, I mean, I used to tell everybody and myself that it was a way of hiding, you know, because... Uh, I suppose that at heart I'm still, well I'm not anymore, but I was always quite shy. But the older that I get, I realize it's more about, I just like telling stories. I, I like, I, I'm a storyteller at heart, you know, uh, as abstract as they may get, but, it, it, but inherently I like to take people on a journey and say, and guess what happens next? This is ground control to Major Tom. Go get your leader. Tell him that we need medicine. Bowie's fascination with Orwellian themes has given his lyrics a futuristic edge. And over the course of 20 albums, he's continually flirted with science fiction. In his music... Is there life on ...and on film. I saw pictures of your planet on television. For me, the 70s were the beginning of the 21st century. I think there was a whole bunch of us who, who kind of... We poured down the stairs of the 60s, rumble tumbly all over each other, kind of grasping at the elements that happened in the 60s that we found appealing. It's a replacement for the mythology of heaven and God and spiritual needs. So for me, uh, it wasn't that I had some deeply rooted belief in Martians or outer space happenings or whatever, but they became a new galaxy of spiritual ideas. <laughs> While he may be a product of the 60s, Bowie's real commercial success came in the 80s, when he traded in his spacesuit for a zoot suit and dove into the mainstream as a pop star, turning his attention to more all-American subjects, like girls, when Bowie experimented as frontman for the hard rock quartet Tin Machine in the early 90s. 
After two unsuccessful albums and gigs on a much smaller stage, he ditched the band and turned... Take a band like Sonic Youth, I mean, he was doing atonal stuff in 1980. You know, you take The Cure, and he was doing kind of glammy pop in 72. You take me, and then you pick, it, pick your era. You know? The impact that he had on me was just really, in the same way that Hendrix kind of made me realize when I was young and at school, that there was like another world, and it was like a, a world that I wanted to be part of. I mean, he made things sound very kind of magical and surreal, and I like that. Contemporary artists like the Stone Temple Pilots, Marilyn Manson, and Nine Inch Nails who shared the stage with Bowie on his last North American tour, cite the Thin White Duke as a mentor and inspiration. Do you hear your legacy in the music from other musicians? Um, yes, I think I've, I probably, I feel the, the, the uh, I probably feel the ripples of what I've done. And, and for me, when, when bands started coming forwards in, in, in the 90s in the States, um, claiming to have been influenced by my stuff. I mean, I was bowled over. It was very flattering and, and really kind of uh, validating for me in a way to uh, hear that I'd made that kind of impact. So how do you feel right now, now that every, it's almost like I everybody claim else them as our own. <laughs> they are children of our loins. <laughs> and we have girded them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Very I good. thank you. <laughs> Wonder you. Bravo. Bowie also told Liz he's currently planning his world tour scheduled to kick off in May, but couldn't confirm any North American date.